All right, guys, we're going to go ahead and get started with our open mic. Thank you all for coming to our open mic, drop the mic event for Street Stories. And uh, those of you who are new or who are coming for the first time and hearing about Street Stories podcast, um, we are a podcast that uh, goes out on the street, me as your host, and I uh, have a question every week for you guys, and we elaborate on that question, you tell me the stories on the street, and um, I just get some really cool stories from all you guys, and why storytelling? I know some of you, maybe you're thinking like, why storytelling, like why is it important? And you know, I've asked myself that question also when I first started um, this podcast, um, which who I want to thank for giving me this opportunity, Gretchen in the corner, our publisher, uh, The Sundial. <laughs> um, she created this storytelling event and also this podcast. And I just wanna thank you. Um, last semester we had Liz Vasquez host it and it was just pretty new. And so this semester, I kind of took over the podcast. Uh, I went out there on the street, and I kind of just talked to people about their stories, about you know romantic gestures, um, greed, uh, what motivated you to change. And I just think that storytelling is like a great opportunity for us to um, communicate and uh, just come together as a community and like bounce ideas off of each other. I think that it's something that we kind of need at this time with technology around. We're all into our phones and walking on campus or walking on the street with earphones in, I think that um, bouncing off ideas and listening to people's stories will inspire all of us to, you know, do something maybe better. And uh, that's why I love street stories. And uh, that's why storytelling is awesome. So um, before uh, this event, I actually got a few storytellers to come up and tell their story. Um, I have a few here today. And the first storyteller I want to bring up is Dominique, which I met her a few weeks ago on the street as I was hosting the podcast. And I just felt something really cool about her. And I knew she had something to say about something else, about a story, about a topic. And I'm just so glad she's here to tell her story about what she learned. So our theme today is what I learned, and I think she's gonna bring it to you guys tonight. So, um, Dominique, why don't you come tell your story? I need more of a round of applause. Yes! 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 I feel the energy of the room. Um, just to piggyback on what she said, it's crazy. I was just in New York a couple of uh, months ago, and it was so quiet on the train, guys. Like, normally, you know, I went five years ago, and you have people that are, like, playing music, chatting, talking, but no, like, about, I think I want to say 70% were on their phone or looking down at their phone, and I was not even including people who had earphones in. So, it's crazy. Um, thank you guys for coming and listening to our stories tonight. Um, I just want to start off by saying, yeah, thank you. <laughs> and, you know, it's tough life here, right? Um, how many of you have known someone, friend or family member, that's been, are committed suicide? Yeah. Oh, wow, a lot more than I expected. Okay. Yeah, so it's tough, right? Um, being that person that's kind of left behind, if people would say. Um, my dad killed himself when I was 12 years old, and it was such, I can't even explain to you as a 12 year old, really, like, what that means. Um, I remember my mom telling me at the park, uh, I think I just finished getting my hair done, and we randomly went to the park, and I thought it was weird, um, and we're sitting there by this huge tree, and I remember her telling me, and I think I initially laughed, um, which is still a reaction of mine till this day. <laughs> um, like right now, I wanna cry, but I'm laughing right now. Uh, and so when she told me, I think I left to Texas a couple of months later, I went to the funeral and I'm sitting there. Um, I went to the funeral by myself. You know, my mom and dad were separated at the time. Uh, they're divorced, uh, he was very abusive with her, and um, I ended up going to this funeral alone because she had, she's a single mother, you know, she had to work, 
um, and continue life on the home front. Uh, so I went by myself, and I, I don't re really remember the plane ride. I just kind of remember going to a family that I didn't know. Okay, and so like I'm always single, single mother. I'm always on my mom's side. I didn't really know my dad's side of the family. Um, so that was one hard part. But being there, I was welcomed, and they welcomed me with loving arms, of course. And I remember being at the funeral and sitting in the front, and I could just feel like the heaviness behind me. It was just heavy, and um, I remember walking up to the to the coffin. Um, I remember looking down at my dad, and there's a bullet wound on this side that you could see. They didn't really cover it that well, and um, I just remember looking down and like not recognizing him. You know, I have this image of my dad. You know, like once upon a time, once upon a dream. I was daddy's little girl, that was me. And I didn't see him there. And uh, this is probably my biggest life lesson. Um, turning such a disastrous feeling into something beautiful and I was only 12 years old, but I knew there was something wrong, there was something missing. And even at that age, researching and trying to find an answer why somebody would commit suicide or why somebody would kill themselves or take their own life. And, have, and you know, that, I don't want to say courage, but that feeling of just doing it even. And um, for years, I've, I've looked for answers, I've asked questions, and what I found out is just, we need more love, you know? And my biggest lesson is turning, you know, negatives into positives, uh, turning these disasters into something beautiful and into art or to help someone else. And uh, I struggled with how I was going to do that <laughs> because even though I felt like it was my fault or I felt like I had no guidance even coming back from the funeral, okay, I, I said already that that was a single parent mom who was already doing everything that she could to help support my growth. But not only that, um, there was a lack of guidance there, I felt like. I remember going back to school, I remember getting bullied even, and not even caring because my dad just died. Like, he just killed himself. I would get made fun of, <laughs> but I saw something else, and I, I wanted to do something else, and I wanted to do better, and what I did was start observing people. What I did was go into this hermit mode of like, just being quiet and trying to figure out how I was gonna use that pit in the bottom of my stomach as power to teach someone else or to motivate someone else. And here on the stage telling my story, hoping to um, are hoping to motivate other people. And so, after years, trial and error of trying to come up with some way, I finally started a nonprofit organization for mental health awareness. Um, now, I started this about, or thinking about it about five years ago. And I think just now, I feel like I'm actually coming into like what I really want to do with it. And so when I saw her, on the street with street stories, I was like, amazing, there's somebody already out there telling stories. Um, and I had just came back from a road trip from here, California to New York, where I stopped in about 10 different states to like talk to people in person, because again, going back to the cell phone thing, where we're constantly right here, <laughs> I wanted to be in people's face. Like I wanted to like see their reaction. I wanted real responses and I wanted a real viewpoint about how people perceived the mental health of their local community and um, the things that they've been through. And I wanted to connect with them and I wanted to tell them my story and say that I understand and you're not alone because that's another big lesson that you're not alone. And we all have our drama and our, <laughs> our shit every day that we have to deal with and we all have a way of dealing with it. And some of us may have guidance, but not all of us. And so sharing our story and telling your truth 
opens up different perspectives for that. So, thank you. That's our story. Um, one more thing. If you guys, you guys have phones, I'm sure, out already, follow the amazing movement um, where I'm documenting my story about becoming a mental health advocate. Um, I'm also, I do, I have anxiety, I have uh, mal depression and PTSD from the military and other things, but, and I wanna kinda show you, like, even though I'm struggling, like, I still, and I have this positive attitude and I'm still going and I'm still telling my story as hard as it may be, because I wanna burst into tears right now. <laughs> um, I still want to connect with people, and I feel I feel like I um, heal through that and listening to other people's stories. So follow my journey. <laughs> and where should they follow you at again? That's on Instagram. Sure they got it. Yeah, the amazing movement. The amazing movement, and that's on Instagram. On Instagram. On Instagram. Okay. Um, thank you, Dominique, for that lovely story. Um, one thing I got out of her story is uh, she said that the world needs more love. And it actually reminded me, um, as I was driving here with my boyfriend, we were trying to get here on time, you know, the traffic, the parking is crazy, and we were just like at a stoplight or whatever, and this truck pulling next to us on the far lane was just like honking and honking. I'm like, why is he honking? There's The, the light is red. <laughs> And um, of course, the people like in front of him couldn't go because it was red. And and I'm just like, why? And he, you could just see the rage in his face, and like in a hurry. And I'm like, why is he honking? That's that's not like their problem. If he's late somewhere, or if he's trying to get somewhere, that's his problem. That's what I told my boyfriend. I'm like, man, the world needs more love and more like patience. J just because you're late doesn't mean you should take it out on other people or act like that. It was just like so much rage in his face, and it just bothered me so yeah we need more love <laughs> um so i have one more speaker here and i believe let me look at my list uh dakota dakota jimenez are you here all right dakota come up here uh, this is dakota i actually um he was up on my first episode of street stories for romantic gestures and i'm just so excited to have someone from my first episode here um, so I'm gonna let you take it away, Dakota. It's great to meet you again. Yeah. Hey y'all. So it's actually kind of funny that we're on the topic of love and letting people in and stuff like that because as a person that really believes in like zodiacs or believes in like that whole like astronomical idealistic views of people, um, I'm a Cancer. So definitions of Cancers. Oh, hand raise over there. I feel ya. Um, <laughs> It's hard to open up to people because our definition is we're crabs. So we have a hard shell. It's hard for us to open up. So for me, I've learned it's not that easy to open up to people. And it's kind of like standing in a field and you're standing in the sun with just the rays on your skin and you feel the warmth and there's a cool breeze, but it's not bothering some, but you hear the birds chirping and it sounds lovely. And then out of nowhere, this moon starts rising and it starts getting dark outside. And you feel this loneliness and this aching side inside your heart where you want people to be there, but you just don't know how to let them in. So as a way to protect that, you start digging yourself a hole and you fill it with the feelings in which you want to have. You want to be happy. You want someone there with you. And you feel that maybe if I try to protect myself and build these walls that maybe Maybe that's the way I'll let people in. And that's not how it works. It's like when a pebble gets thrown at you and you ignore it for the first time, but then a pebble gets thrown again and you look around, but nothing's there so you don't understand what's happening. And then out of nowhere, it's like a giant boulder gets crashed into your head and there's a dent, but still you don't understand why and you finally stand up and look around, but no one's there. So you decide to build a wall to protect yourself so no more pebbles or rocks get thrown at you. But at the same time, in that wall, you build a window and you look out for other people and you see how they're happy and you lust for that feeling. So instead of staying inside your bubble, you step out and you reach for their bubbles. But while reaching for theirs, you finally connect with someone and you let them in. But as you let that person in, they want more than just your feelings. They want your heart. So instead of standing there and helping for you, they break your heart and leave you alone. So then for you to protect yourself, 
you start reaching out for other people because you think maybe it's just that one person, maybe everyone's different, and maybe I can find someone else. But within that, you learn that it's not okay. So you go back inside and you build war walls and you build a house in which you protect yourself, but there's still a door because somewhere in the back of your mind, you're thinking, maybe someone will come in. Maybe if I leave it unlocked, someone will open that door and let me know that I have feelings too and they're okay. Life has a way to let people in, but also take them away. You can't always take people for granted because they're always there all the time because you have to remember that there's a point where they'll leave. When I was in high school, my sophomore year, my mom died of cancer. It was an ongoing process from middle school and I found out on my birthday that she was gonna die two years later. Imagine being a 13 year old kid not knowing what to do and feeling lost in a world. It's like building a house because you don't know where to be but you want a place to belong. So you look outside and finally someone steps inside that door, allowing you to expose yourself because you have feelings and you know that maybe this person doesn't want to just dip their toes in my pool, but they want to be submerged in my feelings because they want what I want. They want a connection with the person because it's not just about me, it's about us, it's about having feelings. We live in a world or a society where it's not just, oh, I'm gonna do what I need to do, but we need to start living for other people. We have amendments and rights, yet at the same time, we don't use them to our advantage. We have the First Amendment freedom of speech, but at the same time, it's taking away our freedom of speech when we have social rights. We have civil rights and human rights, but at the same time, both of those can be taken away because we have a government that thinks that they can do whatever they want. So how can we live in a world that we want more love, we want to let people in, but at the same time, we build these walls because people don't know how to be equal. The definition of equality is to be equal with not just rights, but status, economic, and race, and sexuality. So how can we want equality if at the same time we look at each other and see our differences, not for how they are great, but how they are negative in this world? We live as people because we want something that can better us instead of bettering the world that we live in. That's what I've learned. That was awesome. I'm sure all you guys have felt something about, some type of thing about that. Um, I know I did. But um, as you can see, storytelling, I mean, these two were rock stars that just went. Um, however, if you guys don't have to like be that great. Storytelling is for just to let out like what you have learned, first of all, and what experiences you had. And all you have to do is describe that story. And the way I like to think about storytelling is the metaphor of soup. <laughs> soup has like all these ingredients in it. You have your noodles, you have your broth, you have your salt, you have vegetables, you have whatever you want in the soup, the ingredients of it. And that's kind of how like a story is. You have all these little highlights and ingredients of the story. As you can see, Dakota just like described just these little moments that build up to be this story that can communicate to all of you to be something relatable and something that we can all understand in a different way. Um, so I encourage you, if you have any story or anything that you would like to um, speak up about, um, I have Lori, Flora? Flori. Flori, 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 see I remembered. Um, we have Flori in the corner right there as you come in. Um, there is some papers where you can put your name down if you want to come up and speak. It doesn't have to be super long or anything. It could be two minutes. And just put your name on there, put it in there, and then um, we're going to take a break. And when we come back, I'll just pull out of that. Um, in the meantime, we have 20% off of food outside for season students. Um, and also, Alistair, the owner of this bar, uh, gave us you know one free drink for attending and checking it out. Um, I think we have some more tickets, right, Flori? Yeah. We have a little bit more tickets and then some wooden chips. So if you did not get one, please go see Flori. And yeah, we'll be right back and just enjoy yourselves. Thanks, guys. So, Manuel, I'm going to let you come up here and tell your story. <laughs> Everybody welcome Manuel. Manuel, or do you go by Manuel? Uh, Manny, Manny's fine. Manny, Manny, okay, I'm sorry. I put a little spice to it. So, everybody, here's Manny. Um, he's the man. So, 
How you guys doing today? Um, what I learned today is uh, law of attraction. How many of you guys have learned uh, the law of attraction? Anyone? Raise hands. Yeah. Alright, so a couple of you guys know what law of attraction is, right? So um, just for in case you guys don't know what law of attraction is, it's basically like whatever you think about, it comes into reality. So let's say one one day, like, let's say that like, um, you're trying to have a Tesla, like you know what, I'm trying to get a Tesla, but right now you just drive like a Honda Civic or something, you know? <laughs> yeah, why not, right? Yeah. And then um, eventually, like your thoughts manifest reality. So I'm really a big believer in that because um, at first, when uh, my first few years in college. Um, I didn't really believe in that. I was like a negative person. So like um, pretty much everything around me was black and white. So I was pretty much the painter and my life was the canvas. You know, so everything I painted was black and white. So I didn't really want to do anything. I didn't want to exercise, play sports. And all I wanted to do was sleep, you know, because I wanted to escape with my dreams, you know. You want to escape and dream what you want to do. So um, basically uh, when I had to go to work, uh, I remember my friend Pedro, was like, hey man, you gotta get up, you gotta get up to get up go to work, you know? You got like five minutes to go. I'm like, oh, nah, man, I I'm good, man. To be honest, I didn't want to do anything, you know. So, um, little, like as the years passed by, I realized that you just gotta be positive with people around you, you know. And then um, my sister showed me this Netflix movie called The Secret. I don't know if you guys heard about it. It's it's pretty life changing. You know? I was like, oh wow, this 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 works, you know. So. Um, after watching that, that show, um, it's so crazy because um, you know how the you see, uh, the Golden Globes, they had like an after party? And then, because um, in my mind I was thinking like, how am I gonna get a TV internship, you know? Like, everyone denied me, like, no one answered me back to my emails. I'm like, oh, I just hope this, you know? I'm like, I'm not doing anything in my life. So, it's so crazy because I was there for a shoot because um, I'm kind of interested in modeling. So, some photographer was there like, you know what, you should come for a shoot. So I was there in Beverly Hills, and I'm like, what am I doing here? I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> so I'm just there in line, like, all right, just, you know, I was posing after I got the shower, like, all right, all right, I gotta, I gotta get the right angles, you know, like. And then, um, so I, I was there in line, and then um, I realized I'm inside the hotel, and then um, the person who was the photographer wasn't there. So I realized, like, wow, so I just drove here just for nothing, you know. So I went back in line, and I met some some people who were in line to say my spot. So what they were saying is like, um, yeah, I'm a, I'm a TV producer and from Torrance. I'm like, no way, this is insane, you know? Like, I've been, I've been thinking about this for a long time. So um, as I was waiting in line, I was just acting interested, you know? You just gotta get to know them, because you know you're excited, like, okay, can I get interested? You know, you can't be like that, you're, you're gonna be weird. You know? <laughs> can't be a weirdo, man. <laughs> so um, I'm like, I'm like, all right, you know, it's nice to meet you. Uh, oh yeah, I'm, I'm senior in uh, Cal State Northridge, and I'm interested in TV. You know? I kind of want to do that. I'm like, all right, you know, let's take your contact info. And then um, I started doing like the producer assistant, so I was just like filming like little shows here and there. And I was just, it was just so crazy thinking about that. I'm like, man, I was just, just thinking about this, you know. And uh, I remember another example was that when I was ready to get into college, I got denied to so many like regular colleges, so um, CSUN was my only option I had. So um, little did I know I had the power of law of attraction before I didn't even know. So I was just thinking, like I was in high school, I was like, I didn't really care, you know, I just want to play video games, you know, like, oh, this is awesome, you know. <laughs> so um, little by little, I also started growing up, and then when I realized, like, time to, uh, to apply for college, I realized that no one accepted me. So um, even CSUN, uh, regular admission didn't accept me. So little did I know, I just had this thing in the back of my mind, like, you know what, I gotta go to college somehow. And then I had no options in front of me, so what I had to do is, I don't know if you guys are aware of EOP, <coughs> from CSUN. So uh, what they do is they help like low-income families, they help you transition from high school to college. So that's the only way I got in from, from high school to pretty much college admission. So um, it's just pretty crazy just looking back and then, um, you remember how I told you how like life is like black and white? Like once you realize that you alter your mind, like everything's gonna work out, you start seeing color again, you know? You start seeing like, oh man, you know, life is not always about like, just negativity, you know. There's always two sides of things, you know. There's always the yin and the yang. Mm -hmm. You know? Yeah. So it's just it's just crazy to see that it's more than life and you see how you know. Yeah, and that was my story. <laughs>
So, I uh, the next guest actually, he uh, I met him actually this past week. Uh, he goes by the name of J.R. Jones. So he is a rapper. Uh, he, he's musically inclined. He tells stories. He does a bunch of cool stuff. And um, it's a little bit different than storytelling. So it's spoken word. Um, so he's basically gonna come up here and do spoken word for me. And uh, yeah, why don't you come up here, Jared Jones. Welcome, thank you for coming. Thank you for having me. Thank you for having me, how's everybody doing? Hi. Yeah, doing good. About that wind, right? <laughs> me and my brother parked down the street and um, it felt like we were in a SpongeBob episode. <laughs> <laughs> it's crazy, but um, it's pretty interesting. So. Um, I actually like the fact that this is like a story mode type of thing. I am an artist. I, mean, I go by the artist name of J.R. Jones. But um, uh, uh, I like the fact that you guys are doing the story time because as an artist, we try to write as much as we can about the human experience and um, and bring our, make it relatable, like bring our lives into it, and make it relatable so that the listener can, can understand it. So um, I wrote this piece and it was about like one of my past relationships. And so I think it's cool, before I even go into it, I'm just gonna read you guys the lyrics and stuff like that. But um, before that, I, I wanna talk about it because I think it's really, uh, it's really powerful when you start thinking about relationships and the impact that they have on us as humans. Um, and as artists, it's our job to be uh, vulnerable. That's how you help people, that's how you touch people, um, that's how you reach people. So like, of course, as a, as a rap artist, I, you know, I glorify the thing, like, you know, the average rapper things, you know, the nice cars and the women and all that stuff. That's part of the human experience too. But um, it's always special when, you can, when I can tie my own hurts and my own experiences into my music. Um, so this past year, we released a song called Promises. And uh, I named it Promises because I had gotten into this relationship. And you ever been in a relationship where the, the person that you're with they give you all these promises, you know, I'll never leave you, I'll promise one day, you know, we're gonna work out, it, it's gonna work, no matter what, blah, blah, blah. Get all these promises and we really cling to them, especially when we're younger. I've been in like three or four different relationships. <laughs> like the same, you know what I mean, the same, same thing keeps happening over and over again. Um, but with this one, uh, it was a little different, because it was, it was like, okay, I've been through a few relationships already, like if this one don't work, like I'm good, you know? <laughs> so, um, it didn't work, but I'm glad, <laughs> but I'm glad it didn't work. Um, a year ago, it's weird. I don't, I don't believe in coincidences. I don't know if anybody here like believes in like fate and how things are supposed to happen. And, I mean, I just believe like in the law of order. I don't believe it is a coincidence that I just met her a few days ago. And um, I don't believe it is a coincidence that I never drive down her street, but I drove down her street today to get here. So it, it was really weird. I mean, I was telling him like, "Yo, I don't want her." So, but anyways. I digress. Um, <laughs> I think I was saying what happened. Oh no, it was special. It was special because um, I want to kind of explain it before I uh, uh, read it to you guys, so you guys kind of get more context to it. So, like I said, it was like my, my second or third relationship, and um, I was feeling like this has to work. I've been through it too many times, and um, this has to be the one. This has to be the way was not the wife. A year ago from today, I was absolutely just broken, 100% just depressed. Never had been through depression before in my life. I had been through some crazy things, but I've never gone through depression. And anybody here that's been through it, you know it's like this dark cloud. You feel like you can't, like every day, like I just wanna give up. Like, you know, I don't, whatever. No matter what happens, I just wanna forget about it. Like, just feel better. You can tell yourself to feel better, but it's not that. And then also, you don't wanna, you know, take drugs or go to a, Psychiatric, feel like a crazy person, but um, every day it's a struggle, and it's beautiful to be able to stand on the other side and be able to say, you know, I made it through that. You know what I mean? And um, uh, yeah, one of the hardest parts actually about writing a song, I, I explained this to my followers on my social medias and stuff like that, was I remember trying to write the words to, to the story and feeling like I can't, I can't write the words. Like I start writing, and I would break down, like. Ugh. That's me, I'm talking about myself. You like when you hear a song and you're heartbroken and you're like, yeah. you know what I mean, like, oh, that, that line hit. It's like, I'm writing the line, so I can't even finish the song because, you know what I mean, I'm feeling the lines or whatever. 
But um, basically, the song is talking about how um, I was promised, I was promised something, right? Like promised that that loyalty, promised that that uh, that for sure relationship, and it didn't. In the end, it didn't work out. Um, so in the song, I always refer to myself in the third person when I'm writing or whatever. So I always like, so don't mind me if I say that. But so the guy in the song, uh, he's been lied to so many times he's, he's, he's gone through so many different relationships that he's at a place where he would just rather just hook up with somebody and and be with the chick for a night and let it go so there's so he doesn't get hurt anymore so he doesn't so he can stay focused and doing what he has to do so he doesn't get hurt anymore but um yeah by the way we're performing i'm gonna be performing the actual song with the track and stuff like that this sunday at csun um there's a dance group called NES. They're doing a really cool thing. If you guys, if anybody's interested, just let me know. Um, just give me a sec. Let's see if I can find it right there. But besides my, uh, okay, no, no, I find it out. Okay. All right. So there. Would you guys rather me kind of like just read it, like read the words, or kind of like? No, you gotta wanna, do it all the way. <laughs> I want to fill you guys out. Uh, I know you, you guys do. have like, huh? Do what you do. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. That's what I do. Yeah. <laughs> they are. Do you need technical assistance? Can you help? <laughs> I think I know how to work with these things. No, we don't have the camera either. I got it. Okay. There we go. <laughs> One of these things looks familiar. I guess I should be familiar with you guys, right? Okay, so this is how it starts. This is the chorus. So again, this is promises. Is you about to pull up or not? Is you about to prove all that talk? Cause I ain't about to. Can we cuss? No. Yeah. <laughs> Cause I ain't about to call your ass tomorrow. Cause I've been dealing with some shit. People never follow through with their promises. But I could promise this. I don't want relationship, nah. I don't want relationship, nah, nah, nah. Is you about to pull up or no? Is you about to pull up or no? I had to readjust my life after being lied to. My last love came and left like a drive through We used to talk about kids and our I do's. And man, I really thought you was a ride or die too. Couldn't make you stay even though I tried to. Guess we couldn't keep it genuine like I do. Never thought you'd be the one I say bye to. But now I'm here alone with no one to cry to. It's fucked up. But damn, I lucked up. Looking back at the situation, I'm back brand new, not accepting visitations. <laughs> I mean, well, I got a few exceptions. I still remember the last thing that you said to me. You told me that you told somebody else instead of me. Was those your last words, nigga? Will it better be? Spoiler alert, you'll never ever find a better me. Is you about to pull up or no? Is you about to pull up or no? I misread every misfortune. Now I'm breaking open hella cookies. Now I'm serving myself in big portions. I see the fruits of life and where the darkness took me. That shit shook me. I can't pass time thinking about past time because it's a waste, like that last line. Now because all of my... Now because all of my trust is gone, I'm up this bitch like all night long. So tell me if you want the way, and if you are, I got the room ready with the drink. Back in the city trying to eat you like a buffet. And if you driving fast, is that how you like the pace? I hope you drape the lace. I misread every misfortune. Life's a bitch, but that bitch gorgeous. Love costs us. What's sad is that you can't afford it. Um. Oh wait, that was my punchline. Yeah. <laughs> I'm Jr. Jones. Thank you guys so much. Who cares if, if you mess up? Who cares if you forget it? It's gonna come back to you. It's your experience. It's your story, and that's that's what we're doing up here. Tell, telling stories, and storytelling can come through music, like like he Jr. just did. Um, we tell stories every day. All of us experience work. We experience families. We experience relationships. We experience love. We all experience these things, and that's why storytelling or music or however we express it we're all here to like communicate it and express it to each other 
And that's what this storytelling event is all about. So don't feel bad if you are nervous or you feel like you can't come up here and do what whatever or what one of these people did up here. You can, I mean, you can just come up here and make your mistakes, and that's what it's about. Um, so I have somebody that was brave enough to put their name in my golden jar. Um, let's see who it is. I see hmm, Matt. Oh, shoot, I can't read the writing. I'm sorry. Matt, Matt. If Matt's here, uh, come up to the stage. I would love to have you up here. Uh, Matt is going to tell his story in the way that he wants to. So let's all welcome Matt up here. Oh, hey. See, I met this guy last a few weeks ago. I came to check out the clouds, and here he is. Hey. Thank you for coming by. Yeah. All right, um, you can tell your story. I'm going to pass over the mic to you. Sure. Enjoy. Cheers. Um, forgive me if I rant for a bit, but you know, I come here too often. But, uh, it's a good place to be because it's good beer. Um, I don't know. I grew up here in the valley, and it's a it's an interesting thing to see how uh, where it's been and where it is now, and also to see just kind of um, how things are changing, which is also a good thing in progressiveness, but. If you would have told me I was drinking at a brewery 10 years ago, that was me off of Calvert between Van Nuys and Kester, I would have said bullshit. The fact of the matter is I'm here, and because it's a great spot. Um, and uh, growing up in Los Angeles, as we all know and probably have seen, it's um, there's a lot of farces, and like as far as as far as. Um, ideas and projections that people put themselves out there and it tends to be for lack of a better word sometimes fake and growing up here I always like saw people and found them interesting and could see like you know different arts different people and seeing how they are but when you get to a certain rise of success you can see some of that light just get lost in the process so I found myself uh, 21 I moved to Seattle and I, uh, I got a kitchen job I started to cook and I just saw this really honest process doing your own stocks getting kitchen knives like getting your cuts right making sure that like the salt's on knowing how to season properly learning how to like make stuff from beginning to end in a really honest process and that's been um, a real weird thing because essentially I started at a kitchen job just started peeling potatoes Fucking eventually just cutting potatoes, eventually making just rice, doing soups, doing stocks, being on the cold line, learning how to do the fucking the salads, learning how to balance, learning how to do different dressings. Then you get to the hot line, start burning yourself, learning not to, what not to do, finding out that the fucking oven is hot. It's, um, it's, a, it's a weird process, and the weird thing is the more you do it, the more it just becomes like essentially a routine. And... Um, you know, working in kitchen life, I'm like, my legs are all shaking. Uh, working in kitchen life, um, it's a weird thing because you uh, you work for really high-end places that pay you shit. It's more of an opportunity because there's a hundred people behind you ready to take your job. So, <laughs> forgive me. That's why we're so eventually, once you get your wheels right, you deal with the pissing contest. There's always fucking attitudes in the kitchen, and like there's always people barking. There's always someone after you. There's always something that you need to do, and you only have five fucking minutes to get it done. And once you learn how to restrain that, you find a little bit of inner peace. You look at the clock, it's fucking 6 p.m., and then you look back, it's 12, and you're closing up the shop. And uh, recently, I started working like on a personal chef. And it's great. I'm uh, getting paid more than I ever have. And uh, I'm working less than I ever have. And it's been awesome. It's starting to find... Um, it becomes a process. And it's a weird thing because... Uh, <laughs> especially in the kitchen life, you're never supposed to have an ego or go after yourself or anything like that. However, once you find yourself in a place where I'm like... I have this, and I'm trying to find that belief that I actually do have this. It's a weird thing when you think like you're gonna get caught. 
but who's going to catch me? Like, <laughs> it's, um, it's a weird process. It's a struggle that I deal with, but it's also uh, an understanding the convenience of nervosa and like anything from depression to fucking whatever, it's like, it's kind of a gift because essentially we're not running after our food or like having to worry about our next meal or anything. So I take solace in that to know that there's a lot of us out there. Either way, thanks for letting me uh, rant at you for a bit. <laughs> have a regular up here. Last call for stories. So do any any volunteers for stories? Anybody inspired to do a story? A rap? Anything? Anything? Doesn't even have to be a story. It could be a rap. It could be anything that's... Yeah, that's great. That's great. Get up here, girl. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what? I noticed that there haven't been a lot of women up here. I love it. Eileen, Eileen, you are the woman right now. I'm like, hey. nervous here. No, you're good. You got good. this. You, got you are good. So here you go. Here's. Okay. <laughs> so hi guys, my name is Eileen. Uh, hi Eileen. <laughs> um. So the question was, what have you learned? And one of the things I've learned, like in, overall in life, has been that at the end of the day, like if you can't love yourself, no one's gonna love you like that in that way. I'm nervous. I'm sorry. You're good. You're good. So, um, so just a little bit of like a background story. Um, Hold the mic up. Yeah. So a background there you go. story. Hey. So we're yeah, hearing yeah. my voice. <laughs> but um, I was in a toxic relationship for about five years. So this person became my life. I was afraid to even take the bus by myself. So we were together for a long time, obviously. So. When you're with someone for that long, you become so codependent. <laughs> you forget, and since it was toxic, like I said, you forget kind of like how to be on your own. Like I said, I was afraid to even walk home by myself. I always felt like I needed that other person to be there for me. So like in a sense, I kind of became him, you know? And it's been hard. And one of the, well, what I've learned has been, sorry I'm all over the place, I'm trying to like, <laughs> But, yeah, so that's what I learned, that, like, because of my childhood, too, my past experiences, like, example, like, my mother left me when I was five months, and my dad <laughs> has always been, like, on and off with, like, his relationships, and that kind of, like, reflected, like, I learned that our childhood actually determines a lot of our, like, the rest of our lives, and because my parents were never in the picture, I had those abandonment issues, and, like, trust issues, it reflected onto my relationship. So I accepted things that I shouldn't have accepted. And from there on, <laughs> I learned that like I became codependent and I needed to take myself away from that position and really become who I am. Because I, I went from being a super social person to being the girl that had no friends that was just with that other person the entire time. So that's what I learned. I, I went to college, we broke up. And it was hard. It was so hard because I didn't know how to live by myself anymore. And when you're you're with the toxic person for so long that you become that toxic person too. And now it's kind of learning. It's a process. It's not gonna happen overnight. You're not gonna be this happy person overnight. And I got into like really bad depression. Like I couldn't like wake up in the morning.